That was the heroics welcome coming from the D Tigers. They are back in the country, and it was usually it was a huge one because you had fans and journalists, everyone ready to welcome them back to the pro, back to Nigeria in Lagos. All right, so that's it. Uh, a good uh, welcome for uh, the victorious uh, D Tigers of uh, Nigeria. Back to back champions they are, and of course the fans showing love and appreciation for what the girls have been able to uh, do, winning it back uh, to back. Talking about the FIBA Afro Basket uh, Championship. All right, so uh, let's move on and uh, talk about all the, all the news uh, making the rounds from uh, this part uh, of the world. Just uh, this seems to be flying under the radar, but the 2019 African Games is currently going on uh, right there in Rabat, Morocco. And of course, this morning, we will take a look at Team Nigeria's performance so far. What has been happening? in all the events across board. We'll do that for you on the show this and, morning. And also on the program, we'll be talking the English Premier League where Paul Pogba's costly miss actually denied Manchester United two points at Wolverhampton. All right, so that's it. A lot, a lot happening right there. Paul Pogba, usually the penalty taker, but this season it seems to be Marcus Rashford. But he lost the penalty, and of course, there's the fallout. There seems to be a little backlash. But that's not where we're starting uh, the show uh, this morning. And of course, we'll, we'll move on and uh, start with basketball. That's where the show starts this morning. Of course, our own, uh, sitting right next to me, our own Cecilia Morogwe, caught up with the girls uh, yesterday uh, and um, witnessed the arrival. And um, a, a lot of stories to tell uh, from the girls. Some we can put out there, some we just keep in our hearts. But a, a lot happened in Senegal. Yeah, absolutely. Welcome to the program. Then we're starting with the D Tigers this morning. It was all about celebration in the night with the girls actually coming in late into the night. We expected the arrival at about 9.45, but it wasn't to be. We didn't get to see them to like, uh, like almost, I think, like past 11. Yeah, it was really late into the night at about 11.30 there. But that was when, you know, they were able to come out and all their plane actually landed almost to 11. Past 10 30, we're still waiting. When are they going to come? Until we saw them actually coming out from the international airport right there in Lagos, and all that, led by the NBBA president, talking about Nigeria Basketball Federation president Musa Kida. He, was, he came with them. He had to fly in from Nigeria to go meet them after the war. So he came with them, and they had some supporters club mm -hmm. waiting all through, you know, to see the girls and all that. Well, it was a joyful moment for all the girls, all of them being able to defend the title. 2017, that was what happened. They brought the trophy home. You know, you saw Indy Dimando there. At that time, she was a player. This time around, she went with the girls as one of the assistant coaches, which was really remarkable for her. But then the most important thing right here is the fact that they were able to defend the title. We, we talked about how, you know, the Senegalese 15,000, uh, you know, capacity arena and all that filled to the brim. Mm -hmm. And it was more like you playing against the home fans or, and also the girls, you know, on the, the, the court. By the end of the day, they were able to just come out victorious. And that's why they celebrate. And this celebration actually went into the night before they left the airport at about 12 midnight. Uh, let's just say, early hours of this morning, 12 midnight actually in the morning. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm really surprised that um, the fans waited, basketball fans waited patiently, the officials. Uh, I mean, in our private chat, you had uh, questioned whether or not these girls will receive, uh, the, we get the reception that, that they deserve as back-to-back -back, uh, champions. And uh, some people in the MBB have told you not to worry. Uh, I guess they had something planned. Uh, uh, this is good. It could be better. But at least as a starting point, uh, this is good. Uh, I mean, to show that uh, th their labors were not in, in vain. Even though some people will argue that sportsmen get paid, but let's not forget that they're flying uh, Nigeria's banner. Uh, they're fighting for the green, white, green. So they are our heroes, and we need we need to celebrate uh, the, the, these ladies. And just, ju just to add that uh, the ladies have been doing us proud all across the board, football, everywhere. And so uh, I, I'm delighted for, for these girls. And I hope that uh, this will not be the end. We'll see more glorious uh, participation in global events. And hopefully there will be trophies up. 
Yeah, absolutely. That's what we were uh, aiming for, especially uh, with the way the girls have been together since 2015. You've seen some players mm -hmm. retiring. Cecilia Okoye, she's out of the team. Uh, Didi Mandu, she's out of the team. But then they also have other new players, like Ibekwe, for instance. Mm -hmm. No, she just came in and we walked straight into the team. Although she had to work very hard, it wasn't so easy for her. But I love the fact that as you're having some players retiring, you're also having some players actually really coming up uh, and all that. Well, well, let's start listening to the girls now, starting with uh, Ezine Kalo, the MV of the tournament. It was what she worked for and her teammates helped her to actually achieve what she aimed to achieve. The experience was definitely tough. The road there to be five now and to be champions at that was not easy at all. We competed in front of 17,000 people and that was an amazing feeling and to beat Senegal was just even better. We need an arena here in Nigeria. We really do. To compete in front of the Dakar fans like that and be able to come home and know we have the same people here with us. We need an arena here. So, President, please build us an arena. We need one. I'm still in shock. I'm still, if you would have told me four years ago I'll be MVP of the team, I would laugh. Because it's just an amazing feeling. I worked so hard for this. My, I could have done it with my teammates. You know, with them finding me in a, in, a, in a position to be successful and just being there for me, it's just an amazing feeling. We need better preparation. We need better, more support. We need an arena here in Nigeria. We need better funding. We need things that will help us. We're doing so well here as a whole. And if Africa is behind us, we need to see it. Now, I, I mean, I, I love the final things that she said. No, they, they've won. I mean, it was a remarkable experience and all that. But the thing is, what stops Nigeria from actually having a basketball arena? She says when they were playing against Senegal, she saw the people there. Yeah. We don't have that here in Nigeria. So they're not asking for too much. What they're asking for is, I mean, just much support. I mean, more international friendlies, you know, more better preparations and all that. It can come to camp in two weeks, you know, train together, you know, play some friendlies that they can then go over there and win and come back. It shouldn't be a routine. It shouldn't be what we should be proud of all yeah. the time. She, she made a passionate appeal uh, to the authorities. Uh, she, she went as far as mentioning the president, give us something like this, uh, um, a basketball arena that, that could, you know, with state-of-the-art facilities. And those things stimulate growth. Yes. You know, we are, we're having issues developing our game uh, at, at, the grassroot, locally, yeah. at, at the grassroots level, but, but that can spur us on. Like, if I'm a basketball fan and I know that anytime Nigeria is preparing, we're not going to travel to the U.S., we have an arena here that has all the facilities that the girls must first touch down before going uh, anywhere, or maybe the, like we have the Afro card now, maybe the ones that are here that will participate, you know, things like that have a way of stimulating growth. Yes. So, why are you still grappling with developing? the game out of grassroots, that in itself uh, will be doing a, a large part of, yeah. of the job and everything will just uh, work together. That's what is it, Kalu. Um, as we're celebrating, le let's not forget that a lot can yes, still be achieved. Yeah. And this, this, this is the right moment. Now we're celebrating, there's still a lot that we can do. Yeah, absolutely. We shouldn't just gloss over the fact that, look, they, they've won. But then what was it like going into mm -hmm. the tournament? That's what she's talking about. Another player also talking, uh, Yemi. I told you, she's also talking. Yeah, and I mean, <laughs> the, the girls, some could just barely take the words out of their mouths. Yeah. Uh, were so excited. Uh, and I guess the, the excitement as well uh, yeah. caught you when you were uh, speaking uh, with us. So let's listen to Atonia this morning, uh, probably saying the same thing. We need more support. Uh, we're delighted that we won. We thought it was going to be difficult, but we did it. My voice is gone. We've been screaming, yelling, celebrating for the past uh, two days. So we're just happy to be in this spot and uh, give ourselves the opportunity to head to the Olympics. It was tough. It was like 100 degrees, over 17,000 fans, but we stuck together throughout everything. We had a lot of adversity, but we stuck together. We just played tough. That said, we stuck together, we played tough. She, she lost her voice, the singing and the dancing, <laughs> uh, the jubilation uh, and, and everything. And you can't, you, you, I mean, you, you can't take it away that these girls surpassed expectations. So, surpassed yeah. expectations, not that we doubted their quality, yeah. but we all agree that playing in Senegal's backyard might, might be difficult. We thought that that was going to be the biggest hurdle, and at some point, like you said, our hearts in our mouths when Stop. they almost, when they almost uh, capitulated, but they held their nerve and they won. And I guess 
that moment will live long in their memory for those that play, for those of us that monitor, for those of us that watch. And I guess that's what she's just trying to say there. Yeah, absolutely. Another player also talking, I uh, caught up uh, with uh, last night, was uh, is, uh, Evelyn Akato. She's also, you know, excited to be part of the team. There's something she said actually, you know, took me by surprise. is the fact that she says, look, that you have best five uh, players were selected as the best team in Africa. I mean, they were targeting that five players from the D Tigers will all be that. But then it's just two, you know, that made it and all that. You had two from uh, Zimbabwe, uh, Mozambique, and one from Mali. And also you have the Trari, yeah, the Ivorian girl, the Senegalese girl, and all that, all of them. But then she says, going into the tournaments, what they said to each other was the fact that, look, we want to be uh, 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 just the five best players they're going to pick from Senegal will be all Nigerians. Let's listen to her. She also made an appeal to the authorities to also uh, promote basketball in Nigeria. I mean, it's all about believing in yourself, you know. I mean, I know, I know we said we were going to try and retain our tournament. And I mean, we did. It's all about believing. And we, I, we actually believe in, in the team. And then the coaches believe in us. That's the most important thing. I'm happy and I thank God that we won, you know. And also, like the 200 million Nigerians were praying for us to win the tournament and we won. So that's the most important thing. Actually, we want to make it the five, five Nigerians. That's our goal. And we're going to try and do it by God's grace. We're going to try and keep up doing it by God's grace. We need support. We need support from him, you know. I mean, not for, like the, the women, we just went to, uh, to win the tournament. And the men, right, and they're praying for the World Cup. We all need some uh, support. We need money from them to come to help us out, you know. So we need, we need him. We need him to, to, to bring out, to release money to us, to release funds, you know. For both male and female, we need money. That's the most important thing. It's all about the money and also the support system. This is what she's mm -hmm. uh, talking about, Evelyn Nakato, echoing what uh, Izini spoke about earlier. I mean, like the good book says, <laughs> money has read all things. Precisely. And, and like, like, like it's also commonly said, yeah. money makes the world go round. Yeah. So I guess that's just what they're saying. And then we, we join our voice to theirs. They need support. She stylishly put it in there. We have won now. The guys are still waiting. Yeah. They need support. You have to support them. Let's not get lost in the moment. We're, we're celebrating these girls. It wasn't as if the conditions were ideal. Yeah, it wasn't at but all. They, but they still made us proud. And the guys are facing a similar uh, situation. So we need to do more. I mean, somebody said here on our show yesterday that, look, if you give a tenth of what you give to football, to basketball, we'll be winning titles. Uh, everywhere. So uh, I think we need to do that. Put the structures in place. It's a sacrifice that the government needs to do for maybe one or two years. And to get to a point, all federations will be coming, going to the government, capping out every time and say, give us money. Because we'll put the structures, we'll see that, look, sports does not mean you throw money away. It's an investment. And when you invest, you see the returns. But if you just throw money, it's not, even the, it's not about throwing the money. It's how. How you, how, how you invest the money. Because you can spend huge amounts of money and still not get Results. Because that's what usually happens in this part. But if we structure everything well, put money into the right things, a couple of years down the line, nobody's going to be asking all the government needs to do there will not be the infrastructure. Absolutely, because if you check at the beginning of a particular season, you have different sports federations and all that. You can have a meeting. You can actually have a particular subvention that you give them. Depends on their performance. If basketball yeah. is doing very well, then their money should be higher. If football is doing very well, same thing. If athletics is doing very well, same thing. So when you now have that, they can actually now build on that and get sponsors to join them. Now, if you don't have anything, where do you even start there, there's, from? There's something I've always said, and you can bear me witness that I've always said it, and I'm still going to say it this morning. I think the problem here in this part, especially in Nigeria, is if you give money, money to people and you don't ask them to account for it, you're equally corrupt as the person that spent that money without doing anything. I think the government should not be afraid of, oh, we give them money, uh, they don't tell us. You, look, that's going to be the caveat. I'm going to give you this money. What is the government going to gain from this money? Down the line, what are you going to do with this money? Let us know. You see, by, by the time you put all of those in place, people are going to be very careful of going to the government to ask for money because they want to see the results and it has to be productive. And over the years, the investment has to yield. The Americans don't just throw money. Based, yeah. They don't just throw money. We, we, we talk about them investing. But look, their sports has gotten to a point where all the government needs to do is just a little bit of grants here and there and put the structure. And that's it. And that's it. The, everything is self-sustaining. Okay. Yeah, another player talking is also uh, Ifunaya Ibekwe. It's another player. I mean, she, she's, she actually she, she's talked about it on this program that, look, she was going to make the team. 
and she did. She walked into the team, and right now she is, you know, Afro basketball winner. Let's hear from her. I feel great being with the team, you know, and, you know, we, I came on the show prepared and just to make the team and be a part of this, it's amazing. Like, there's no other feeling than to represent your country and to play and then bring back the trophy and be gold, so it's an amazing feeling. Everyone just brought their A game. Everyone brought what they can bring, and there's even more in us to push to push to the Olympics. So um, everyone did well. Ezene led the team. Um, Evelyn led the team. We all led the team at different points of the game, so we just stay together. It wasn't easy, but it was achievable because we believed in ourselves and we had a good time, you know? We fell, we got up, we were there for each other, and we came back home with a trophy. <laughs> Coming back home with the trophy. Very important. And <laughs> the girls are excited. And this morning, they're all trying to, you know, have a little nap. And then, well, we're, we're waiting for, they said they'll roll out, the, you know, the activities and all that. Uh, we just I guess the girls that. are just waiting for whatever the federal government is going to do. <laughs> they, they may not say it, oh, but, I, but I guess... It should, just, just, it should just be a norm. Like they're they're waiting they do, for the yeah. trip to the villa, everywhere. It's actually a visit. <laughs> I, mean, when you, I mean, I love what the American system, what they're doing. I'm not trying to compare here, but I love what they do, that every national team, clubs and all that, that are champions from the NFL the to the NBA. They visit the White House. The White House. So it's like a tradition. We can actually have that. We don't have to make an appeal. We just like, okay, once you come, you have a date, you know, maybe two, one week after everyone, every player, not just some. Just to celebrate you know, success. Precisely. Uh, you know, to the rewards for, for hard work. Mm -hmm. All right, let, let's also uh, listen to um, the coach of the team. And uh, Otis Huli, uh, the coach of the team. Uh, I mean, excited. I would be excited if I was in his shoes. And um, he, he has one or two things to say. Let's listen to him uh, this morning. Share his thoughts on what went down in Senegal. I know these girls. Now I'm learning, I'm learning Africa. And uh, I guess I was right. I let them know there's a lot of people in places, even Nigeria, that pretend that they're for you. They want to see you lose. But you always have each other. And this is the moment that you picked up a basketball for. It's a moment any coach picks up a whistle for. Embrace the moment. Sense the moment. And give everything you got like it's no tomorrow. Those girls did it. They made the right plays when they needed to. Despite how bad the officiating was down the stretch. They still did it. All right, so uh, that's the coach. You could barely hear his voice. The man was tired, and uh, we appealed to him. He granted us that interview. Uh, I mean, a lot happened, but obviously, um, he, he's delighted. Anybody will be. Yeah, of course. You know, he, he said something that, you know, he told the girls, to look, if you're playing, uh, if you're playing right here, even there's some people even back home that don't even want you to win. So don't look at that. Don't even look at the fans. Just stay focused. That's all he told them when they took that time out, when it was... 54-54, and they came out. They head on. They were able to win a 55-60, five-point game. But then the trophy is here. We've got a break now. We'll come back. Of course, we'll be talking about other sports, African games, and also what went down at uh, was yesterday in the English Premier League.